men would have given that answer. Not many men need their breakfast as much as I do at present. Best of luck, sir. I'm sorry about Hotspur. She seemed a trim little sloop. Goodbye, Mr. Gerard. The court wishes to address a few questions to you, Captain Hornblower. Yes, sir. You handed over command of the sloop Hotspur in the forenoon of the 17th, I understand. Her material condition was good? Reasonably so, sir. That is hardly an answer. Good, sir. Have you any comments to make regarding the fact that Hotspur went aground on the Black Rock with a falling tide? It would be an easy thing to do. There is a fierce ebb tide and back eddy and the rocks are nearly invisible. How often did you, as a captain, sail near them? Nearly half the time of my two-year command. I think it is fairly clear, then, that if even young Hornblower here could keep her off the rocks, this Meadows should certainly have been able to. I hereby declare that Captain James Percival Meadows is guilty. Sir, what about Lieutenant Bush? He is cleared, but will need to apply for re-employment, of course. Captain Hornblower? You've been cleared. Thank God, sir. And your hoy will be giving me passage to England? You'll find the society something savage, or rather overly pretentious. Sir? Ever heard of a Lieutenant Gerard? Oh yes, very gentlemanly man. Quite accomplished. Try intolerable. We'd better get back before they leave without us. I just hope we don't run into any French. We've almost no defence in that water hoy. Mr. Bush, Captain Hornblower, I trust it went well? Quite satisfactory. I think I'll turn in. Captain, I think you'd better come on deck, sir. What time is it? Seven bells. Evening watch. We caught sight of her not ten minutes ago. Lend me your glass. A brig. Don't like the looks of her. French! The mast spacing isn't right for one of ours. We should come about. Too late. It's only a question of hours before she catches us. Maybe we'll get away in a rain squall. What's up to us? Their guns could pound the princess to pieces. Slaughtering the lot of us. What precisely would be good about that scenario? He's obsessed with cannon. I'd say at least 26 pounders. A few long. Mr. Gerard, that was not an invitation to bore us with your knowledge. Sorry, sir. Our only chance is to border. We've more men. One salvo of grape, and they've even the score. Mr. Gerard. Sorry, sir. He's right. Captain Battleston. If we pretend helplessness, they might allow us to get close enough to board properly. You aren't in command, but it's our only chance. We've no real weapons on board. The prize crew they'd send will be armed to the teeth, sir. Indeed, Mr. Gerard. Heave it to, Battleston. We are sending a prize crew to board you. Steady, men. Monte. That's got the prize crew down. Quietly. You've armed for seven more now. Very good. We'll cast off. Now, men. Come on, men. We've settled it. Orders, sir? Ask Captain Battleston. Sir, there was an entire watch down below and they've cut the tiller ropes. She can't be steered. We've not enough men to take care of the crew below. We could burn her, sir. I won't sentence them to be burned alive. We could leave her a wreck. Cut the jeers, halyards, forestay. We'll keep them from following us or reporting our position for some time. I agree. It won't take five minutes and we can still make England in time.
featuring the voice talents of David Alt as Captain Horatio Hornblower, Alastair Stewart as Lieutenant Bush and Dreadnought Foster, Stephen J. Cohen as Lieutenants Oric and Gerard, David McIver as Captain Balderstone, Bruce Busby as Captain James Percival Meadows, Jeremiah McCoy as the French Captain, and narration by David Drage. Adapted and produced by Alexa Chipman, additional music provided by Spare Parts. Visit their website at bfv.com forward slash spare parts. Horatio Hornblower is the property of C.S. Forrester and the miniseries Movie References are the property of a and and its affiliates. No copyright infringement is intended by this program. It is entirely fan-based and not for profit. Thank you.